Hi, welcome to the next of our series of Practical Electromagnetics for Engineers. Uh, today we're going to be talking about matching using stubs on transmission lines. It turns out that you can't always uh, match a load to a line. Sometimes your load just doesn't match the line, but there's a te technique called stub matching we can use to uh, match any complex load to a line, at least within reason. So let's see how it works. Um, remember before we looked at using stubs as circuit elements, we found that open circuited stubs had reflection coefficients of 1, short circuited had minus 1. The impedance as a function of length of these stubs was given by a cotangent or a tangent function for the open and short circuited stubs respectively. And we also learned that depending on the length of the stub, um, if the impedance was positive, it acted like an inductor and you could essentially choose the value of the inductance by choosing the length of the stub. If the uh, impedance of the stub was negative, it acted like a capacitor. And again, you can tune the capacitance of either an open-circuited stub or short-circuited stub just by choosing the length. And it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Uh, you just do it for convenience because you can get most values of inductance and capacitance using either type of stub. So. I've chosen a case here where I've mismatched a load to a line. I've chosen for the data you see here an impedance of 50 ohms and a load impedance of 100 plus J 100 ohms. Um, so that's a pretty bad mismatch. We know in this case that the impedance as we move from the load back down the line is given by this equation right here and we see it's essentially determined by the reflection coefficient and we know it's complex and if we plot the real part which is shown as the green line and the imaginary part which is shown as the red line this is what it turns out to look like and you can see right here where z is equal to zero you in fact get um, the load value you'd expect 100 real part and 100 imaginary part um, you'll also notice something interesting there are a couple points on the line where the real part of the impedance is equal to 50 ohms. In fact, it matches what we'd like to have. The trouble is, at these points, the imaginary parts of the impedance are pretty big. Um, so, so even if we have the right real part of the impedance, the imaginary part's going to be wrong. But what if we could put on a stub to cancel out that imaginary part? that would solve our problems. And that, in fact, that's what single stub matching is, is putting on a stub to get rid of the reactance, the imaginary part of the impedance, and you put on the stub at a point where you're going to get the right real impedance. Well, it turns out that essentially what we're going to do is we're going to put a stub in parallel, as is shown right here. And in that case, um, it's easier to work with admittances rather than impedances. Remember, the admittance y is just 1 over the impedance z, and when you have two admittances in parallel, they add. And two impedances in parallel, you have to take 1 over z1 plus 1 over z2 to get the total one. So, so because these are complex numbers, we simply convert everything to an admittance just by taking um, 1 over the impedance. And I've plotted the exact same graph we had on the uh, earlier figure, or the earlier slide, right here, where, again, the green is the real part of the admittance y, and the red is the imaginary part of the admittance y. It turns out when we do that, because of complex numbers, things shift around a little bit, but the uh, real part of the impedance that we're going to be looking for is, is 0.02, because that's 1 over 50. It turns out that it exists right there. Um, and if we draw some lines on this, you can see that we, in fact, have an imaginary part of the admittance of positive 0.03 j and so we need to add a stub at this point right here that gives us a value of z stub oops let's change this because we're working with admittances y stub equal minus j 0 0.03 and when we do that that stub's going to exactly cancel out the imaginary part of the admittance at a point where we have the correct admittance to match the line. Um, and by doing that, we essentially can get rid of any reflections from a mismatched load. Well, well, this is fairly straightforward to do. It turns out that if we plot the admittance of the stub, y sub s, as a function of the length of the stub, um, we get a graph like this. This is our tangent or cotangent graph. It happens to be a tangent because in this case I'm using a shorted stub 
we just read the value of minus 0.03j off here, find out how long the stub is, slap it at that point on the line, and essentially we've matched our load. Remember, we're just working with admittances rather than impedances. The transmission lines don't care. You just do what's a little bit easier mathematically. Um, how do you actually do this in real life? Well, it turns out that you can do this with BNC cables simply by uh, putting in a T and connecting the cables as shown in the diagram right here. Here it would be easier to do an open circuited stub because all you have to do is simply cut your, your cable you added, this cable right here, um, off with a pair of scissors or a pair of wire cutters to get the right length so it matches. It's harder to put on a short at the right point. Um, if you're going to do this with a printed circuit board um, in microstrip line, you'd see something like this where you simply add a little piece of microstrip out like that and you can create um, a stub this way to match various types of loads.